Hey, everybody. Welcome to worship. We're so glad that you joined us tonight as we begin our new worship series based on a great book that, re that Lisa is reading, and it's called Simon Peter, Flawed but Faithful Disciple. It's by a guy named Adam Hamilton. I'm excited to learn more about this man who left the life that he knew, his job, his family, his hometown, and literally followed Jesus. Let's start things off tonight by lighting our candles, and then we'll start our song. Bring your tired, bring your shame, bring your guilt, bring your pain. Don't you know that's not your name? You will always be much more to me. Every day I wrestle with the voices that keep telling me I'm not right. That's all right, cause I hear a voice and he calls me redeemed when others say I'll never be enough. And greater is the one living inside of me than he who is living in the world, in the world. Tonight's scripture reading comes to us from the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. It reads, One day, as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats... Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. 
So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets and catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down. And this time, their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in from the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please forgive me. I'm such a sinful man. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. They left everything and followed Jesus. Can you imagine this happening to you? Here you are, minding your own business, living your life, and along comes this man, Jesus, and tells you to drop everything and go with him. What would you do? It sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? Just up and leaving your life. Everyone and everything that you know. Who would do that? Well, the Bible gives us the names of 12 men who did just that. They left everything and followed Jesus. In the scripture passage that Beth read, we're learning about Simon, James, and John, and how they ended up in the elite group of men who we know as the 12 disciples, or 12 apostles. Later in the same chapter of the book of Luke, we learn that the disciple Matthew, who was also called Levi, did the same thing. Luke 5 verses 27 and 28 tell us, Later, as Jesus left the town, he saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up, left everything, and followed Jesus. Levi got up, left everything, and followed Jesus. Who were these 12 men who Jesus handpicked to very willingly leave their lives and become his disciples? Well, the fact is that we don't know a lot about some of these men. In fact, most of them are barely mentioned in the Bible. Here are some things, though, that we do know about the 12 disciples. At least four of them, maybe more, were fishermen. One was a zealot, a member of a radical group determined to overthrow Roman rule. Matthew, or Levi, was a tax collector and would have been considered corrupt and traitorous. The others were probably tradesmen or craftsmen of the time, but we can't be sure about exactly what they did. What stands out in this list of occupations is that these were just a bunch of ordinary men. They weren't judges or lawyers. They were not priests or kings. They were fishermen and tax collectors, laborers and activists. These men weren't high and mighty. They were common and average. They weren't the president or the pope. They were you and me. Like I said, the Bible doesn't tell us a whole lot about each disciple. Some of them were mentioned just a handful of times, some a bit more than that. But one of Jesus' disciples is mentioned many times, more than 100 times, in fact. This is Simon who Jesus would also call Peter, and who is often referred to by both of those names, Simon Peter. If you spend some time reading through the gospel books of the Bible, do you remember which they are? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The first four books of the New Testament, right? 
If you read these books, you'll notice that Simon Peter sort of shows up everywhere Jesus does. He's always right behind Jesus, pulling at his robe with a comment or a question, much like a curious toddler. I'm sure that many of us can come up with a Simon story that made us laugh, shake our head, or ask, what was he thinking? Simon Peter isn't known for his ability to stay silent when expected. He isn't known for hanging around when he is asked to. The Gospels often paint a picture of Simon Peter as a bumbling, mouthy, politically uncorrect disciple. Flawed. But the Bible also tells us that after Jesus' death, it was Simon Peter who would be the rock and foundation upon which the church was built. He was courageous, determined, and true to Jesus until the very end of his life. Faithful. Think about this and think about your life. How many times have you found yourself stumbling and tripping through life, struggling to get things right? And then how many times in your life have you had one of those great moments, a time when you knew what you had accomplished was a big deal? It might take you some time to see it. It might take you some years to see it, depending on how old you are. But one day, you'll understand that you are Simon Peter. I am Simon Peter. Beth is Simon Peter. And that is why we are exploring this man's life for the next four weeks. Taking a closer look at Simon Peter will help us realize that we're not so different from him and the other disciples. In fact, there are many times in life that we can really relate to him. Much like Simon Peter, you and I are all flawed but faithful disciples. And it all started with a call. The call of the fisherman. Why a fisherman? Fishermen during Jesus' time belonged to a class of people called Am Ha Aretz, which means people of the land. By this time in history, these people of the land were considered pretty low class. They lived simple lives. They weren't well known or famous. They were hard workers. And why Simon? Why did Jesus choose Simon's boat that day? Was it chance or was Jesus up to something? In the book of John chapter 1 verses 35 through 42, we find out that Jesus and Simon had met before this day. Hear these words. The following day, John the Baptist was again standing with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, Look, there is the Lamb of God. When John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw them following. What do you want? He asked them. They replied, Rabbi, which means teacher. Where are you staying? Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying, and they remained with him for the rest of the day. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men who heard what John said and followed Jesus. Andrew went to find his brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. And if you go back just a little bit in the book of Luke, from where our main scripture text was, we find out that Jesus healed Simon's mother-in-law. Chapter 4, verses 38 and 39 read, After leaving the synagogue that day, Jesus went to Simon's home, where he found Simon's mother-in-law very sick with a high fever. Please heal her, everyone begged. Standing at her bedside, he rebuked the fever, and it left her, and she got up at once and prepared a meal for them. Two times Jesus met and spent time with Simon before asking him to be his follower. 
Sounds like there might have been something about him that stood out to Jesus, doesn't it? Or maybe, even then, as a human on this earth, Jesus was able to see into the heart of people. And next, why the nickname Peter? In the second sentence of John 1.42, Jesus gives Simon his new name, Peter, which means rock. Jesus had just met this guy, and with literally the first words he might have said to him, Jesus gave Simon a nickname which would turn out to have more meaning than anyone in that group might have guessed. Do you have a nickname? Or have you ever given someone a nickname? Sometimes they stick, and sometimes they don't. Many times nicknames are chosen because they tell something about the person who is receiving the nickname. They give others insight into what that person might like or what they're good at. Sometimes nicknames are just a shortened version of our full name, aren't they? But from Simon to Peter? Changing his name to one that means rock. There has to be something more behind it, don't you think? While we can't be sure, it's been guessed that Jesus' nickname for Simon was more about what he was to become than something he already was. Remember earlier when I said that Simon Peter would become the rock and foundation that the church was built on? I see what you did there, Jesus. Can you imagine the pressure of being nicknamed rock by the Savior of the world? Throughout the Bible, Jesus uses his two names, Simon and Peter, alternately, depending on the situation Simon Peter has gotten into. Pay attention to this when you're reading stories of Jesus and the disciples. You'll notice that oftentimes when Simon Peter is acting in a flawed, unworthy way, Jesus will refer to him as Simon. When he's acting in a faithful, strong way, Jesus refers to him as Peter. Let's go back to the boat as it floats on the Sea of Galilee. Here we see the very first time that Simon shows us a flaw. Jesus tells him to go out farther and let his net down, and Simon does, but not without a word to the contrary. You have to give Simon a break, right? Him and his brother and their co-workers had been out all night and had come in with empty nets. Day fishing wasn't productive. The nets had already been washed. They were tired and probably hungry, ready to head home and hit the hay. And then Jesus tells Simon to go out and let down his net. Wouldn't you have grumbled a little bit at the idea too? But because it was Jesus telling him to go out, he did. Simon's lesson for that day was that doing as Jesus says has huge rewards. Simon's boat and his friend's boat almost went under from all the fish they caught that day. If you're an adult, you can swap out your job title for fisherman, the call of the nurse, the secretary, the teacher, the electrician, the daycare provider. And if you're a kid, you can think of it as the call of the student. No matter what you do, you are called. Jesus asks each and every one of us to be his disciples still today. He asks us to drop what we're doing and follow him. Now this may look a little different today than it did in Jesus' time. First of all, Jesus isn't a man here on earth looking us in the eye, asking us to walk away from the life we know. Instead, Jesus asks us to start right where we're at and to do the work that points others in his direction. To do the work that heals and renews and saves the lives of those around us. Some days it might be hard or inconvenient. It might disrupt your schedule or take away from your favorite TV show. You might have to stay up late or get up early. But remember, Jesus calls us all to do his work. 
Jesus chose us to do this work for a reason. Twelve men dropped literally everything and followed a man because he asked them to. Will you choose to follow him too? Will you accept the call? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I Follow. No turning back, no turning back. Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? No turning back. Turn it back. We are so happy that you were able to join us for worship. We hope you'll come again next week and join us as we learn more about Simon Peter. Will you say our benediction with us before we go? Who are we? We are a missionary force of Christians. What do we do? Offer the care and compassion of Christ. To whom? To all. Where do we meet you? Wherever you are on life's journey. Have a great week, guys. Yeah.